Okay. Hi guys, hi BRBG family, it's Jeanette Rosario. Welcome to hot, not hot flow, <laughs> yoga flow uh, with me. My name is Jeanette. I said hot flow because I also teach at Fluid Yoga, but I know you guys are just ready to go for your seven o'clock flow class. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. On your back, on your mats, place the bottoms of your feet together. Allow your knees to butterfly up to either side. I'm gonna get my music going because it always motivates me. Placing your right hand on your belly and your left hand at your heart. Close your eyes. If you've never done yoga before, I highly recommend setting an intention for your practice. So an intention can be anything from increasing strength or flexibility, or maybe inviting some calmness into a really hectic Tuesday evening. Just take a moment to think about what you'd like to happen for your body and for your mind, but most especially for your spirit over the next 60 seconds. And then once you have your intention set, take a nice big deep inhale. And then on your next exhale, go ahead and exhale that intention out and into your amazing universe. When you're ready to begin, bring your knees together, hugging your knees into your chest, rock to the left and to the right. Opening up into your happy baby pose, grabbing on to the outer edges of your feet or your big toes, rocking to the left and to the right, creating lots of space between your feet and your knees, lengthening into your spine, make sure your hips and the back of your head stay on your mat. Should feel really good after sitting down all day or standing up all day. All right, bring your feet and your knees together. Straighten out your right leg out in front of you. Keep hugging your left knee close to your left shoulder, circling your left ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. And then with your right hand, bring your left knee across your body, over to the right side of your mat, and then looking over your left shoulder, out at your left palm. I had a neat idea today. For some of you that know me really well, know that I get my lefts and rights backwards, so. I thought of maybe the next time having a fun drinking game, taking a shot every time I mix up my lefts and my rights. Of course, it'll be a shot of kombucha. What were you thinking, alcohol? Alcohol is for your hands, especially with this coronavirus. Keep your liver safe. All right, go ahead and gently untwist. Hug both knees into your chest. Rock to the left and to the right. We are going to go to the other side. Just go ahead and straighten out that left leg. Keep hugging your right knee close towards your right shoulder, circling your right ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. And then with your left hand, bring your right knee across your body, over toward the left side of your mat, and then look over your right shoulder, out at your left, your right palm. Did you catch that? You get to take a shot. <laughs> All right, go ahead and gently untwist. Hug both knees into your chest, rock to the left and to the right. I always like to do something active for my hips uh, before we move forward. Bridge pose, lifting your hips high up and off of your mat. Clasp your hands behind your back, roll your shoulders back and down, and then come up high on the balls of your feet, really squeezing your glutes, lifting your hips all the way up to the ceiling. Release your hands, lower your hips, lower your heels, hug your knees into your chest, and then roll up into a cross-legged pose. Hands are on your knees. Take a moment for your neck and for your shoulders. Roll your neck to the left and to the right. Today we're gonna to focus on our standing balancing poses and our core. Very important for climbers, for their balance, All right, go ahead and lift your neck back up. If you wanna throw in a few shoulder rolls, why not? Feels really good. All right, we're gonna come up into table pose. So when you're ready, roll forward. Your hands are gonna come up onto your mats, followed by your knees, and then uncross your ankles. 
In your table, you want your wrists underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips, and we'll do some cat-cow arches. Lift your spine up to the ceiling, and then reverse the curve in your spine, directing your belly button down and towards your mat. Exaggerating this movement as much as you can, really breathing up and into every aspect of your spine, from your tailbone all the way up to the base of your skull. All right, on your last one, come back onto all fours into your table pose. We'll open up into your shoulders. Left hand goes to the midline of your mat. Your inhale lifts your right arm all the way up to the ceiling. Wrap that right hand behind your back. Get a nice stretch for the front of that right shoulder. Lifting your right hand back up and then threadling your needle. You're gonna slide that right hand underneath your left. Resting your head and your shoulder on your mat. You can slide that left hand out toward the front of your mat. You can also wrap your left hand behind your back. Come back up onto all fours. We shall switch sides when you're ready. Right hand to the midline of your mat, lifting that left arm up. Take that left hand behind your back. Keep looking up to the ceiling always concentrating on your alignment. Lifting your left hand back up, exhale, thread your needle, slide that left hand underneath your right, walking your right hand forward, adjusting your hips maybe to the midline of your mat if you want to include your hips in this stretch. And again, of course, you can always wrap that right hand behind your back as well. Come back up onto all fours, into your table pose, curl your toes under, on your exhale, we'll find your down dog, lifting your hips up, straightening out your legs, pressing your heels down to the floor. I like to make sure my feet are hip width apart. Spread your fingers nice and wide on your mat. Let your head go heavy in between both arms. Walk it out, alternating lifting and lowering your heels. Take your down dog out for a nice long walk. For your three-legged down dog, left foot gets placed in the midline of your mat, lifting that right leg up, stacking your right hip on top of your left, shake it out, do some hip circles, you could just hold it up in the air, lower that right leg down to the floor, child's pose, lowering down onto both knees, sitting back onto your heels, resting your forehead onto your mat. I like to introduce child's pose early on in your practice, just so you have a pose that you can come into if you need a break. You don't have to do everything. I know some of you really like to challenge yourselves, but the good thing about your practice is that you can make it as tough or as restorative as you need to. All right, over to the other side, come up onto all fours, curl your toes under, straighten up your legs, press your heels down to the floor. From your down dog, Go ahead and right leg, right foot gets placed to the midline of your mat. Inhale, lift that left leg up, shake it out, do some hip circles, hold it up in the air. Lower that left foot down to the floor. When you're ready, coming up behind the balls of your feet, lunge your left foot forward, place it in between both of your hands, lower down onto your right knee, inhale, lift both arms up. Modifying your crescent warrior. And then clasp your hands behind your back, sliding your knuckles down the back of that right hamstring, tilting your chin all the way up to the ceiling. Take a big deep inhale, followed by an even deeper exhale. Lift both arms up, lower your hands down to the floor. Keep your feet where they are, shift your hips back, straightening up that left leg, lowering your forehead onto your left shin or your left knee. Try to get into that left hamstring. Try to straighten out that leg as much as possible. You want to get into your calves, pointing your toes up to the ceiling. Lunging all the way forward. Lift up and off of your right knee. Pop your right foot up to meet your left. Straighten out both legs, forward fold. Grabbing onto your big toes and pull. The goal is on your exhale to try to bring the top of your head closer to your mat. Your elbows are bent, you're using your biceps to create more length in your hamstrings as well as your low back. Release your toes, keep a soft gentle bend in your knees, roll up into standing mountain pose. Inhale, lift both arms up. 
Grabbing onto your right wrist as you exhale, lean over to the left, opening up into the right side of your rib cage. And just as long as you look up to the ceiling, you'll get the stretch where you need it in your rib cage. Slowly come back up, switch sides. Grabbing your left wrist, leaning over to the right. Nice big stretch. The more you can open up into your rib cage, the deeper you'll be able to breathe in and out and inhale and get air into your lungs and into the rest of your body. Slowly come back up, take that back bend, deep inhale. Exhale, swan dive forward, change at your hips, lead with your hearts. Remember you're diving deeply into your mat. Inhale, half lift to lengthen. Exhale, deeper forward folds. Lunge your left foot back, lower down onto your left knee. Inhale, lift both arms up. We're gonna do something different with your arms. You're gonna bend your elbows to about 90 degrees and lean back. Getting a really nice deep stretch for your pecs, your shoulders, the front of your body, the front of your torso. Straighten your arms, look forward, lower both hands down to the floor. Keep your left hand where it is, wrap, lift that right arm up, almost. <laughs> wrap that right hand behind your back. Keep looking up to the ceiling. Exhale, extend that right arm over your head so your bicep is right beside your cheek, your ear. Lowering your right hand down to the floor. Keep your feet where they are. You're gonna shoot your hips back, straightening out that right leg. Bowing your forehead onto your right shin or your right knee. Your hamstrings, everyone's hamstrings are kind of tight. It's because we don't lengthen them enough. They're not strong. Our quadriceps are way stronger, so it creates some imbalances in, that, in these muscles. Lunge all the way forward. Lift up and off of your left knee. You're gonna slide that right leg back into your plank pose. Hold your plank. Your plank is the top of a push-up. If at any point in time, your plank starts to hold, hurt your low back, lower down onto your knees. If you've got a strong plank, which I know all of you do, glide your body forward and back. You can also do some circles. You can just shift your weight to the right and to the left. Anything that feels organic and really good on your shoulders, your ankles and your knees, just to warm them up. From plank, chaturanga, so you're gonna bend your elbows, slowly lower yourself onto your mat, flatten out your feet, press your palms into the floor, lifting your upper body into cobra pose. Look to the left and to the right. Make sure your shoulders are away from your ears. And then curl your toes under, exhale, lift your hips up, pressing your heels onto your mat, downward facing dog. Walk it out, alternating lifting and lowering your heels. For a crescent warrior, coming up high on the balls of your feet, lunge your right foot forward, place it in between both of your hands. Inhale, lift both arms up. My right knee is bent. You want your thigh parallel to the floor, but you also want your left leg nice and straight. Hands to heart center. As you exhale, rotate your chest toward the right side of the room. Palms are together. You're pressing your palms together to activate your upper body. You don't want to use your leg to kind of rest your upper body. It doesn't feel good. The variation is to straighten out your arms, lowering your left hand toward the floor, lifting your right hand all the way up to the ceiling. Hands back to heart center, lower both hands down to the floor. I know what your plank looks like. Let's stack your plank. So you're gonna slide your right leg back, stack it on top of your left, lifting that right hand all the way up to the ceiling. So some variations, if you're kind of losing your balance, you can lower down onto your left knee for extra support. So that's what it'll look like. If you're feeling super strong and shaking just a little bit like myself, you can stay here or come into a tree pose or maybe lift that right leg up and off of your left. Slowly come back into play. Go through your vinyasa, strong chaturanga. This time come up into up dog. So your hips are also lifted high up and off of your mat. Exhale, down dog. Curl those toes under. Lift your hips up, pressing your heels down to your mat. Take a couple of deep inhales and exhales in your down dog. Whatever we do to the left, we're gonna do to the right. When you're ready, come up high on the balls of your feet, lunge your right foot forward. Stay on the ball. Let's switch feet. Go ahead and with a quick switch of your feet, you're gonna pop your left foot forward, right leg back. Inhale, lift both arms up. 
I think that's shot number two for those of you that are keeping score. <laughs> when you're ready, hands to heart center. As you exhale, extend forward, rotate your chest toward the left side of the room. Palms together. Press the, I'm actually pressing my right elbow into my left knee. You can straighten your arms. Ooh, another fun variation is for the vine. You can wrap your left hand behind your back as you clasp your hands around your torso and your left hamstring the left leg. Hands back to heart center. Lower both hands down to the floor. Stacking your plank to the other side. As you slide that left leg back, stack it on top of your right. Inhale with that left arm all the way up to the ceiling. And again, you could choose your variation. If you fall out of any pose, you can always come back into it. No big deal. When you're ready from your stacked plank, come back into your plank. Go for your vinyasa, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk it out, alternating lifting and lowering those heels. So we've done modified and crescent. Let's go through our warriors. So coming up high on the balls of your feet, lunge your left foot forward. Angle your right foot out to the side. Inhale, lift both arms up. This is your warrior one. Your shoulders are stacked on top of your hips. Arms are activated, palms are facing the ceiling. Left knee is bent. Right leg is, the knee on the back of that right leg is nice and straight. Humble your warrior, clasp your hands behind your back, tilt your chin up to the ceiling. Inhale, create some length and space. Exhale, slide your entire upper body to the inside of your left bent knee. Extending your arms toward over your head. The goal is to one day be able to get the top of your head as close to your mat as possible. Exhale, come back up into warrior one. Open up into your warrior two, arms are parallel to the floor. Reverse your warrior, lifting your left palm up to the ceiling, maybe taking a deeper back bend. Come back into warrior two, side angle pose, left hand is to the inside of your left foot, right hand is up to the ceiling. So we've been working on Bird of Paradise for a while. So if you'd like to bind, take that right hand behind your back, Left hand goes from the front of your knee to the back of your hips. If you're moving on to Bird of Paradise, straightening out your right foot, step, hop, or jump your right foot up to meet your left. Grounding down into that right foot, lifting that left leg all the way up to the ceiling. So this is what it's going to look like. And then when you feel ready, straightening out that left leg all the way up, maybe smiling. <laughs> I know, some of these... They get easier when you smile. All right, when you're ready, slowly lowering that left foot down to the floor, lunging your right foot back, rejoining everyone else, unwrapping your arms, placing both hands on either side of your left foot. Come up onto the ball of your right foot, lifting that left hand all the way up to the ceiling, wrapping that left hand behind your back. Exhale, extend your left arm over your head. Lower your left hand down to the floor. With a quick switch of your feet, jump your right foot forward, pop your left foot back. Inhale, lift both arms up. We'll finish strong with our warrior three. So when you're ready, as you exhale, lift that left leg up to the ceiling as you squeeze every muscle in that right leg. If you're a little wobbly, bring your hands back to heart center and you will immediately reestablish your balance like I just did. You can also airplane your arms out to the sides, clasping your fingers behind your back. All right, when you're ready, hands back to heart center, stand up into mountain pose, shake it out, shake out your arms, shake out your legs. Inhale, lift both arms up. Take your back bend, deep inhale. Exhale, swan dive forward, hinge your hips, lead with your heart. Inhale, half lift, lengthen. Exhale, take a deeper forward fold. We're going to step, hop, or jump both feet back into plank, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. All right, walk it out, alternating lifting and lowering your heels. 
All right, because we're filming, I'm just gonna switch sides. I'm gonna start on my right side and you'll know why, because just so you'll have a better view. So on from down dog, come up high on the balls of your feet, lend your right foot forward. Angle your left foot out to the side, inhale, lift both arms up. We'll continue on with Humboldt Warrior. Clasp your hands behind your back, tilt your chin up to the ceiling, inhale, exhale, slide your entire upper body to the inside of your right bent knee. Exhale, come back up into Warrior One. Opening up into your Warrior Two. Reverse your Warrior, right palm up to the ceiling, maybe taking a deeper knee bend. Only if you want strong legs. Come back into your Warrior Two. Side angle pose, right hand down to the inside of your right foot, lifting that left hand up to the ceiling. Stay here or move on to the bind. Wrapping that left hand behind your back. Right hand goes from the front of your knee to the back of your hips. If you're moving on to Bird of Paradise, straightening out that left foot. Step, hop, or jump your left foot up to meet your right. Grounding down into that left leg. Lifting that right leg all the way up to the ceiling. Straightening out that right leg. <laughs> One side's always stronger than the other. Just have to try harder <laughs> or concentrate a little bit more. All right, when you're ready, slowly lower that right foot down to the floor, lunging that left foot back, unwrapping your arms, placing both hands on either side of your right foot, come up high on the ball with your left foot, inhale, lifting that right arm up, taking that right hand behind your back, extending your right arm over your head, Lowering your right hand down to the floor. With a quick switch of your feet, jump your left foot forward, pop your right leg back. When you're ready for your warrior three, lift both arms up. We'll come into crescent first, and then as you exhale, you lift that right leg up. You can bring your hands to heart center. You can airplane your arms out to the side. You can interlace your fingers behind your back. The full expression of warrior three, is with your arms extended out in front of you so that your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders, your hips, your knee and your ankle are in one line. Hands back to heart center, stand up into mountain pose. Shake it out, shake out your arms, shake out your legs. Go ahead and inhale, lift both arms up. Take that deep inhale, back bend, exhale, swan dive forward, hinge at your hips with your heart. Inhale, half lift, lengthen. Exhale, deeper, forward, fold. Once again, step, hop, or jump, don't feet back into plank. Don't feet your vinyasa, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good job, walk it out. Alternating, lifting, and lowering your heels. So, we're gonna concentrate on our abs for a little bit. When you're ready. From your down dog, I would like you to take your right hand, tap the outside of your left ankle. Come back into down dog, switch sides, left hand taps right ankle. Come back into down dog, lengthen into plank. Left palm to right shoulder, right palm to left shoulder, left knee to right elbow, right knee to left elbow. Back into plank, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, hover down, chaturanga, exhale, plank, down dog. We'll do this a couple more times. All right, when you're ready, come down dog. Right hand taps left ankle, left hand taps right ankle. From down dog, lengthen into plank, left palm to right shoulder. Right palm to left shoulder, left knee to right elbow, right knee to left elbow. Back into plank, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Lower down to hover. Exhale, plank, down dog. Good job, just two more times. You can do this when you're ready. From down dog, 
right hand taps left ankle, left hand taps right ankle, from down dog lengthen plank, left palm taps right shoulder, right palm taps left shoulder, left knee to right elbow, right knee to left elbow, chaturanga, inhale up dog, lower hover, exhale plank, down dog, last one, you can do this, I can do this, that was more for me. All right, when you're ready, from down dog, reach across, tap your left ankle with your right hand, left hand taps right ankle, from down dog, lengthen plank, left palm to right shoulder, right palm to left shoulder, left knee to right elbow, right knee to left elbow, chaturanga, hover, inhale, up dog, back down, chaturanga, hover, exhale, plank, downward facing dog, walk it out, that was your last one, good job, walk it out, alternating, lifting and lowering your heels, lower down onto both knees, pick your feet up and shift your heels to the left and to the right, feels so good, after a little bit of core work to get your low back kind of stretched out. All right, lower your feet back down to the floor. We'll exhale into down dog. Placing your hands mat little apart. Feet together coming up high on the balls of your feet. As you exhale, you're going to lightly leapfrog both feet in between your hands. Straighten up both legs, forward fold. Grab the backs of your calves and pull your belly onto your thighs. Resting your chest onto your knees, bowing your forehead onto your shins. No light, no space or air can pass through your belly and your thighs. Release your calves, keeping a soft, gentle bend in your knees. Roll up into mountain pose. Inhale, lift both arms up. As your palms touch, gently rest your hands to heart center. So here comes your standing balancing sequence. We'll start with dancer's pose. So when you're ready, inhale, lift both arms up. Keep your left hand lifted, lower your right hand down to your hip. Bend your right knee, reaching behind you, grab the inside of your right foot. Bring your knees together. Inhale, lengthen into your spine. As you exhale, kick that right leg back and up. I like to pick a spot on the floor, something that doesn't move. The strength of this pose comes from the strength of your leg. The harder you can kick back and up into that right leg, the more control you'll have over your upper body. All right, when you're ready, kick back up into tree pose. So to get there, you're gonna take your right foot from the back to the front. You can always do these poses one after the other, but because this is a flow class, I like to flow one pose into the other. Lifting your hands all the way up to the ceiling. And then for tree pose, left hand goes underneath your right, palms touch. Eagle wrap, go ahead and continue to slide that right leg across, around, and underneath that left leg. And then sitting lower, getting your hips closer to your mat always helps. All right, we'll open up into warrior three. So unwrap your arms first, hands to heart center. You're gonna slowly unwrap that right leg. We did this pose earlier. We're gonna use it to come into your half moon pose. So you're gonna lower your left hand down to the floor, lifting that right hand up to the ceiling. I'm gonna come over to the side just so you can see what it looks like. All right, when you're ready, slowly lower that right hand down to the floor, gently place your right foot beside your left. You're gonna grab onto your left big toe with your left hand. Your right hand is gonna go on, come on, rest onto your right knee as you lift that left leg all the way up to the ceiling. And then gently take that left leg out to the side for this wonderful hip opening pose. I know none of these poses are easy. Bring that left leg back to midline. 
Let's try this pose. Go ahead and grab the outside of your left foot with your right hand and then extend that left hand behind you towards the back wall. All right, when you're ready, untwist, grab onto that foot with both hands. <laughs> And then let's see if we can do this. We're going to slowly lower, bending into that right knee. And then slowly come back up. Good job. Release that foot, shake your hands, shake out your legs. Inhale, lift both arms up. We'll do all of that to the other side. So right hand stays lifted. Lower your left hand down to your left hip, bending into your left knee, grabbing onto the inside of your left foot, bring your knees together, inhale, lengthen, exhale, kick. You're kicking that left leg back and up. This is dancer's pose, or if you do hot yoga, it's called standing bow pulling pose. Don't ask me what it's called in Sanskrit. I don't know. <laughs> I know it ends with asana. <laughs> All right, kick back up into tree pose, taking that left leg from the front to the back. Placing your left foot in front of your right hip, lifting your hands up to heart center. So I forgot to mention this on the other side. This is also tree pose. This is also tree pose. So if you can't, if it hurts your knee to have your foot on top of your hip, you can place the bottom of your left foot anywhere to the inside of that right leg. All right, because we're moving on to eagle wrap from here, hands forward, this time your right hand is gonna go underneath your left, creating the bind, softly bending into that right knee, snaking that left leg around your right, sitting down into that eagle wrap. The lower your hips, the more balance you have. I know this because I'm short and no one's ever knocked me down. Not to my knowledge. All right, let's come into warrior three. So unwrap your arms first. Go ahead and gently unwrap that left leg. As you extend that left leg back, both hands are pointing forward. I'm a little shakier on this side just because I had that knee injury last year, but it's doing pretty good. Half moon pose, lowering that right hand down to the floor, lifting your left hand up to the ceiling. And again, I'll come over to this side just to make it easier. <laughs> All right, slowly lower that left hand down to the floor. Gently place your left foot beside your right. Go ahead and grab onto your right big toe with your right hand, placing your left hand just above that left knee, standing up. So now your left hand is on your left hip. You're gonna gently take that right leg out toward the side. Try to. Ah, there we go. <laughs> and then let's go ahead and try. So you're gonna bring your right leg to the midline, grabbing over to the outer edge of your right foot. And then extend that right hand behind you. Oh my gosh, I'm doing so good with my left and my right. I think I've only had you guys do two shots so far. All right, go ahead and gently untwist. So you're grabbing onto that right foot with both hands. I know, here it comes, slowly bending into that left knee. And then hover, and then press back up. Ooh, that'll make you strong for your climbing. All right, release it, shake it out, shake out those arms, shake out those legs. Inhale, lift both arms up, good job. Take that back bend, deep inhale. Exhale, swan dive forward into your hips, lead with your hearts. Inhale, half lift, lengthen. Exhale, deeper forward fold. Lend your right foot back, lower down onto your right knee. Walk your left foot forward, pigeon pose. You can stay high up onto the palms of your hands just to get a deeper stretch for your right psoas, your right hip flexor muscle. You can walk your hands forward. To complete the pose, resting your forehead on your mat. If you want to do a variation called mermaid pose, 
If you're on the palms of your hands, you're gonna bend that right knee, reach behind you, grab your right foot. If your foot can fit in your elbow crease, lifting that left hand up and over, and then use the back of your head, pushing into your hands to give yourself that stretch that you need for that right quadricep. All right, when you're ready, lower both hands down to the floor, curl your toes under. We're gonna come into your three-legged down dog. So you're gonna lift your hips up just high enough to be able to slide that left leg from the floor up to the ceiling. Make sure to walk your hands back toward that right foot just so you have a steady three-legged down dog. And then we'll flip your down dog. So you're gonna place that left foot on the other side of your mat. Lift your hips up, taking that beautiful back bend. And flip back into downward facing dog and we'll do all of that to the other side. Starting with pigeon pose, coming up high on the balls of your feet, lend your right foot forward, lower down onto your left knee, walking that right foot across your mat towards your left wrist. Again, staying on the palms of your hands just to give that left hip a nice stretch. And again, I forgot to mention this on the other side, it only takes half a second to look back at that left leg to make sure it's nice and straight directly behind you. You want the top of your left foot, your left knee, and, and all of your left thigh to either be on your mat or directed towards your mat. I read something funny on the internet today. It was uh, your liver talking to your hands. The liver was like, wait a minute. The alcohol is for me, not for your hands. Stop it. I thought that was funny because of the coronavirus. Yeah, good luck finding rubbing alcohol. <sighs> All right, for your mermaid pose, let's see if I could do this on this side. Bending that left knee. If you can get your left foot in your left elbow crease, then you know you can move on, taking that right hand over and behind your head. All right, lower your hands down to the floor, curling your left foot under, lift your hips up just high enough to be able to slide that right leg from the floor, kick it up to the ceiling, stacking your right hip on top of your left, shake it out, do some hip circles, hold it up in the air, and then when you're ready to flip your down dog, place the bottom of your right foot, lift your hips up to the ceiling. I know some instructors call this down dog wild thing. And then when you're ready, gently unflip back into down dog. Lower down onto both knees, cross your ankles, Roll back and over your feet. Once your hips are on the floor, we can, uh, we start off with a stretch to your low back. We'll deepen that stretch with a seated spinal twist. So take the bottom of your left foot, place it on the other side of your right knee. So I'll show, show you what this looks like from the side. You're gonna place, take your left hand, place it behind you, close to your back on your mat. Inhale, lift that right arm up, and then as you exhale, twist using that right elbow, pushing it up and against the outside of your left knee. Pick a spot on the back wall. If you want to move, over, move on to the bind, take that right hand underneath your right knee. Take your left hand behind your back, clasping your hands around your torso. Go ahead and gently untwist. Lengthen your legs out in front of you, shake them out. Inhale, lift both arms up, exhale, forward fold. And get your hips, lead with your heart. So we did this a couple of times when we were standing up in our sun salutations. Now that you have the floor to help you, really go for it. Using gravity, using your arms, belly is on your thighs, chest is on your knees, forehead is on your shins. 
Release your feet, slide your heels back up into your hips. We'll do that seated spinal twist to the other side. So when you're ready, go ahead and take the bottom of your right foot, place it on the outside of your left knee. Right hand goes behind you, place it on your mat, close to your low back. Inhale, lift that left arm up, create some length and space. Exhale, twist. Pushing onto the outside of your right knee with your left elbow, picking a spot on the back wall. If you're moving onto the bind, left hand goes underneath your left knee, right hand goes behind your back. Just make sure both hips stay on the floor. So for this bind, it doesn't feel that good because my right hip keeps wanting to lift off. So I'm just gonna keep my right hand on my floor, on my mat. Go ahead and gently untwist. Lengthen your legs out in front of you. Shake them out. Inhale, lift both arms up. And then as you exhale, we're actually gonna roll back onto your backs and onto your mats. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. Extend your fingertips all the way up and over your head, pointing your toes in the opposite direction. Try to be the tallest version of yourself. And then hug both knees into your chest, rock to the left and to the right. We'll just do a little bit more to our, for our core and then get a nice stretch. Airplane your arms out to the sides. Uh, your calves are parallel to the floor. Your ankles, knees, and hips are 90 degrees of each other. Go ahead and gently take your knees out to the right side. Just when your right knee is ready to touch the floor, lift your knees back up and then extend your heels toward the front of your mat. Just when your heels are ready to touch the floor, bring them back in and then twist to the other side. Lift your knees up, straighten your legs, bring your knees back in, and then rotate to the other side. And that's all you're doing. This is a nice stretch for your low back, but it also gets all of the fibers of your core, your upper, mid, lower abdominals, and your internal and external obliques. The slower you go, the harder it gets, but the deeper the stretch to your low back. Exhale each time you lift your knees up to the ceiling and bring your knees towards you. Inhale as you bring your knees up to the sides and lengthen your legs back in front of you. And if you find that too confusing, just breathe normally. All right, we'll do one more to each side. And then on your last one, give yourself a great big hug. Rock to the left and to the right. You made it. And you made it look really good, guys. So we'll uh, start, come full circle, finish as we started. Ooh, sounds like someone's in trouble. All right, your bound angle pose. Sukta Baddha Panasana. I knew I knew uh, one pose in Sanskrit. The right hand is on your belly, left hand is at your heart. Close your eyes. Go back to that moment when you set your intention just to see if you accomplished it. But when that's all done, these next few moments are for you. To reward your body. It worked very hard for you over these last 40, 50, 60 minutes, whatever it was. And then when you're ready for your final Shavasana, go ahead and lengthen your legs out in front of you. Reposition your arms so your arms are beside your hips. Palms are facing the ceiling. Unfrench your jaw, soften your facial expression, unfurl your eyebrows. One quote that re really resonates well with me 
is the definition, the difference between a master and a novice. A master has tried and failed a thousand times. A novice has never tried. So thank you for trying yoga with me this beautiful Tuesday evening. I hope you got to learn something new about your body. I hope you found a thousand ways that you knew your body was strong. You don't have to come out into Shavasana, but because of, we're filming this, so I need to end it at some point. So I'm gonna start wiggling my fingers and my toes. Please feel free to keep relaxing on your mat. Hug your right knee into your chest, followed by your left. Give yourself a great big well-deserved hug. I hope it's not the last one you give yourself tonight. Roll onto your side. If you need an extra moment, take an extra moment. When you're ready, sit up into your cross-legged pose. Palms together, resting your hands lightly at your heart center. I like to bow my head forward connecting my head and my hands to my heart. As a massage therapist, as a yoga instructor, as a nutritionist, as a rock climber, always be aware that because your head and your hands are connected to your heart, your thoughts, your words, the gestures you make, because they're connected to your heart, they should always come from a place of unconditional love, patience, kindness, and compassion. Thank you for sharing your yoga practice with me. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, your week. Namaste.